Hi, so this is lesson four. Let's hope it's picking it up on the mic, I think it is. Uh, and it talks about, oh, hello. <laughs> it talks about more about stationary points, about classifying them. Ooh, so we know if it's a maximum point, it goes positive, you know, has a positive gradient, then it hits a zero gradient, then it has a negative gradient. Okay, and then we know if it's a minimum point, it's a negative, a zero, and a positive. Now, what we're going to look at is the gradient of the gradient, just to, to make it a little bit harder for us. So, the gradient of the gradient. So, essentially, I differentiate it to get the gradient function and put it equal to zero, and then I differentiate it again the gradient, the change in the gradient, which is going to be at a d2y by dx squared. So it's a 2 on the top and a squared on the bottom. Proper random. Right, so let's have a think about um, the gradient as we travel around this curve. So if you look, it's going to be the gradient on the bottom left is positive and as big as it's going to get. And as we travel around the curve, this gradient curve, the gradient of the gradient curve is still positive to here, but it's getting smaller. So if I was to kind of graph what the gradient looked like, it would be kind of positive, but it's getting smaller. And then at some point I hit the stationary point where the gradient is zero. And then I've got negative gradients, which are getting bigger. So the graph of the gradient of the gradient looks like that. So we can say that that, the gradient of the gradient graph, because that's of the gradient graph, is decreasing. So let's have a look over here then at the gradient of the gradient graph for the minimum point. So it's negative and as big as it's going to get. And as we travel along the curve, it's still negative, but it's getting smaller. So I'm negative and getting smaller. Then I hit the, the stationary point, and then I'm, the gradient of my gradient graph is positive and getting bigger. So I've got something which looks like that. So I can say that the gradient of the gradient graph is increasing. There you go. Properly messes with your head. But what it does tell us is for a maximum point, the second differential is less than zero. There. So you see that for a maximum point, because of this graph here, the second differential is less than zero. And then because of this other one that I've done for the minimum point, the the second differential is greater than zero for a minimum. If you didn't understand anything what I was waffling on about here, don't worry, just remember this, that it's maximum when the second differential is less than zero, and it's minimum when the second differential is greater than zero. Right, so there must be an example for us to have a go at. But I can't find my own video. I couldn't find the thing to turn it. So, right, so it's asking us, first of all, for these just to find the second differential. So if I differentiate it once, it's 4x cubed minus 6x. If I differentiate it again, so it's d2y by dx squared. So that's 12x squared minus 6. There. <sighs> that's the second one there. Right, so let's have this next one then. So I'll start off with f of x. So if I differentiate it, it's f dashed of x. So that's 3x squared plus 8x. If I differentiate it again, it's f double dash of x is 6x plus 8. So that's them two. That's all right. It's fairly straightforward. Differentiate it, differentiate it again. We do that when we're messing around with things moving between um, a displacement and a velocity and acceleration because they're linked with rates of change as well. Right, example three then. So it says find the coordinates of the stationary points. So we've done loads on stationary points now. 
So the first thing I do for the stationary points is to do dy by dx. So that'll be 3x squared minus 12x. I have to put a statement, stationary, when dy by dx is equal to 0. And write down the equation equal to 0. I must do that. And then I'm going to solve it. So if you put that in poly, as 3 minus 12 is 0. What's it going to give us? It's going to give us x is 0 and x is 4. Now it wants the coordinates. So if I sub in 0, I get 2 out. So y is 2. So that gives me a coordinate of 0, 2. Check out the answers. Hang on, I'm on the wrong page. Got carried away here. Uh, where is it? Got it, got it. And then if I put 4 into it, I get, according to the completed pack, minus 30. So the other coordinate of the stationary point is 4 minus 30. So I've done that. So now I need to determine whether each stationary point is min or max. And it might ask you for the nature of the stationary points. Right, so I just do the second differential. So d2y by dx squared. So that's going to be 6x minus 12. And I just sub in my stationary points. So I find d2y by dx squared and sub in stationary points. That's my little plan. So when x is 0, d2y by dx squared is minus 12. Now I want to put like a little um, conclusion. So as d2y by dx squared is less than 0, it's therefore max. Can't write max. Boing. Therefore max at 0, 2. When x is 4, d2y by dx squared. So if I sub in 4, I've got 6 times 4 is 24, minus 12 is plus 12. It's not always plus or minus, but quite a lot of the examples give a plus or minus the same number. Uh, so as is to do with symmetry, x squared is greater than 0, therefore min at 4, comma minus 30. And that's how you find on how you determine whether it's max or min. There's one for you to follow there. Exactly the same idea. Differentiate it, find the stationary points and the coordinates, differentiate it again and determine whether it's max or min. So hopefully you pause it and then give that a go. But that's exactly the same. A bit random there with the coordinates but never mind. Right, I'm going to stop there Oh no, I don't need to stop there. Look, that's the end of that lesson. How good's that? Loads to practice here. Amazing. See you later. Bye-bye.